Hi guys, welcome. This is my knitting podcast where I talk to you about all things knitting and crochet and crafting, where I bring you stuff that I've worked on throughout the week, my knitting or crafting plans in general, yarns that I've found and patterns that I've just ran across recently that I love. If this sounds interesting to you, you might want to stick around. If you are a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. This week is pretty, we're pretty much this close to the end of June. And I don't know about you guys, but in southeastern Michigan, where I'm from, it has been raining like nonstop. So that's a lot. And I've gotten quite a bit of crafting done in general and I'm starting to pull out stuff to try to figure out what I'm going to be taking with me on vacation. So I've really got to make up my mind because we're leaving pretty soon here and I think the problem that I'm having is that I have, let's see, I have three sweaters that just pretty much need sleeves. The flax light needs a, or the flax sock needs a tiny bit more, well, more on the body, but I mean, just sleeves basically. So I have three sweaters that need sleeves, and my mind is like, oh, I want to cast this on, and this on, and this on, and this on. So I guess we'll see what I decide. What I'm wearing, it, this is the Fantastitch sweater. Um, by Stephen West and I love this sweater and one of the questions that I seem to get about this is the armhole depth. So I am showing you guys how deep the armholes are here or how not deep I guess depending on how how you like to wear your sweaters and this is what happens when I lift my arms up. I don't think it's too bad. I don't think it's too constricting but <laughs> This is going to make for some weird thumbnail, right? But I don't think it's too constricting. I um, This is one of my favorite sweaters to wear. I knit this with a variety of different super sock base yarns from Blackbird Sycamore Yarns. And it's so comfortable and it's squishy. And you know what? Even though it's, what, almost July, I'm still wearing a sweater because I'm just cold right now. So that that's what it is. You know, I mentioned that it was that it's been raining a lot lately and it has, but not only has it been raining a lot lately, but it's like the windows outside like the windows to the outside are all fogged up and steamed up from all of the humidity, so ugh. Anyways, yeah, like I said, this is the Fantastic, the Fanta Fantastic Sweater by Stephen West, and I love it. And this is probably one of the ones that I'd love to make again in a different color. I know that if you look at the sweater pattern page on Ravelry, there are a bunch of different ones with a bunch of different colors, but I just, I wanted to keep it all in the same color family and I just used varying degrees of blue and I think I like the way that it turned out so it, it makes me happy. Anyways I do have some admin to talk about. I mentioned last week that I was each each episode I'm going to be randomly picking from the comments to randomly picking a commenter to get a pattern from the comments. So I am going to leave a blank spot right here. And this will be me showing you who won from this from last week. So if you could please get in contact with me. Uh, either on Instagram as Mandy Von Knits or on Ravelry as Mandy Von Knits. Now, I did say last week that if you posted 
last week to basically pick a pattern that I, I talked about and post your favorite one in the comments. This is what my addendum is going to be. I'm going to be showing you patterns. Pick your favorite one, put it in the comments down below. When you reach out to me, tell me if you want that pattern or pick a different one. It doesn't matter as long as I can get it off of Ravelry or another place where I can gift it to you, then we're good. Please let them be single patterns. Don't like pick a, a $35 pattern, okay? Just, just like, let's say 15 and below. That, that'll work. Okay, so the same rules apply to this podcast and any podcast going forward. I have quite a bit, I've went through Ravelry and picked out quite a bit of patterns to talk about. And there's actually a new woolen pine pattern and you guys have probably seen it and I can't wait to talk about it because this is one that I've been wanting to make. Um, not wanting to make because it just came out, but this is like the family in the, it's a pattern family, right? So they've got a cowl, a hat, um, a pullover and I've wanted to make the pullover, but now that the cardigans come out, totally want to make the cardigan and I was reading about it okay okay I'm getting ahead of myself let's talk about my knitting for this week right okay so <laughs> I'm all over the place I'm sorry At, my mind all week has been on like vacation right I want to go on vacation and that's all I've been thinking about all week Okay, I took this off the yarn because I finished the sleeve. So here we are. This is my flax light and I love it. Gotta straighten it out some. Now, do you see this sleeve? It's very deceptive. Last week I showed you a sleeve on this. So I was almost done with the sleeve last week. What happened, and I promise this is more, this is more knitting than you think it is because I took out the entire sleeve on this sweater. I kept trying it on, you know, putting my, trying it on like this, basically pulling it. And it's not gonna fit right because um, I have a sweater on under it. But I kept doing this and there was too much room here, right? Like it was really baggy. I did not want this sweater to be baggy in the arms. The body, it's going to be fine because I like my sweaters when the body is baggy and the arms are more fitted. So what did I do? I said, okay, I'm not gonna like this. I need to cut my losses and basically rip out the whole thing. So on the flax sock pattern, it says to knit seven inches of sleeve and then start decreasing. So my arms are a lot, sh are pretty, sh I mean, I have 17 inches from like my wrist to here. So I started decreasing right away. I picked up four less stitches than they wanted you to for the armhole. And then I did, I believe, two more rounds of decreases. You can actually see exactly where I did my decreases using the light bulb stitch markers. So hopefully I'll be able to do the exact same thing on the other side. And I will have a sweater that is baggy in the body and more fitted in the sleeves just like I like it. This reminds me so much of Light Bright. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> so I was going through my email and I get emails from all sorts of places, but I noticed that I was getting an email from a deal site that had Rainbow Bright dolls from Walmart. And I'm like, wow. That's interesting. When are when did she decide to come back? Because I remember Rainbow Bright from when I was like four or five. I had like a Rainbow Bright 
comforter or something. It's crazy. It would be great to have her come back though because I think my daughter would really like her. So this is what I've been working on. Let me hold. Since this has short rows, I kind of got to show it to you the right way. So this is so comfy. I love it. I started on this sleeve and I've got the bottom up to the top. I tried it on and it fits great. It's baggy, which is how it should be according to the pattern. And I should talk a little bit about the pattern because if you haven't watched this before, you have no idea what this sweater is. This is the Willow Pullover. It is a test knit from Andrea Gahan. And I signed up to test knit it. And this yarn is Lang Yarns Regina. And if I'm wrong, I will put it down below. I can't link you to the pattern on this, obviously, because it's not out yet. But I do love it. And you can see the short rows in the back. But not only that, one thing that is completely awesome about this pattern is how seamless it goes from like the body to the arm. It might not be showing as well on camera, but this has been a great sweater to knit and I'm going to love having it as some like something to wear maybe under a white like over a white shirt that's what I'm trying to say the yarn is super soft and let's see it's got cotton silk baby alpaca and a tiny bit of wool by tiny bit I mean like six percent but like I said, this is one of my other sweaters that I need to get sleeves on, just like the flax. The final sweater that I need to get sleeves on, and I put that one up, is the Kylie Pullover. Actually, on that one, I'm going to want to redo the ribbing at the bottom, I think, and at the top. I can't remember if it, yeah, I think it was the bottom because for the Kylie pullover, there's two different options for a neckline and ribbing. And I tried the one option to be a little bit different, but it's rolling too much. But before I do anything on that, I need to block it to see how it turns out. What I'm thinking of doing and since I'm talking about it and you might be lost, I'm going to put a picture of my Kylie pullover that at the state that it's in right now and you'll see how it's rolling. I'm going to black it. If it doesn't fix the rolling and I might do this anyways, I'll take the neckline out and I think I'm just going to knit ribbing. I'm kind of liking the way that the folded over collar, because this has um, a folded over collar as well, and so does this. I kind of like the way that that is, a, a little bit. It, either way, it'll, it'll have ribbing on it, so that's what I'm going to do. But since I'm going on vacation, I'm not going to want to bring sweaters to work on sleeves. I know I'm bringing flax and I know that that will be okay because the flax is pretty lightweight. It's pretty, I mean I have two skeins of yarn and just the flax that I showed you. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna bring that and I brought these out to show you as well. Now I'm gonna talk about the yarn because I forget what it is as well. This is Always Be Kind Yarn, and it is Rainbows After Midnight Self-Striping Rainbow Yarn. It is 7525 Merino Nylon, and it is 440 yards. I love this. It's so pretty. This is the beginning of a muscle burrow. 
Now I started this and I've kind of got it wrapped up here on purpose so that the stitches don't fall out. Okay, so I started this back when I was supposed to have another surgery to kind of tie up my back and I needed some straight stockinette knitting. So I did all of the increases on a muscle burrow and here we are. So I'm thinking that this will be good vacation knitting and I actually have two of these started. Not from the same yarn though. So let's talk about the other one too. Because the other one is made specifically for me because I love this color. This is Mouse Witch Yarns and it is in Year of Yarns and it's February. I hope. It's either February or May, and I'm pretty sure the May was the one that I showed you last week. I found both tags, and that doesn't really help me because I found them loose in my bag. So if you're like me and you have no wherewithal to remember colorway names, then it's either one or the other. But this is also all of the increases worked for the muscle burrow. So I have two muscle burrows started and all they need is like 17 inches ish of straight knitting, something like that. It's different for each size. I've got two different sizes. I believe I made this one smaller. So I just need to see what size I'm making and then take a look at the pattern. The good thing that I've noticed about the Muscle Burrow is that it doesn't really matter what yarn or size or weight you use. You can just take a gauge swatch as soon as you get an inch and work from there. As long as you like the fabric, you're good. So for right now at least, I'm thinking I'm going to take the flax sock which I have two balls of this and the sweater. This is Blackbird Sycamore Yarn in Super Sock and it is Black Fire Opal. I love the way that this looks. This is that rainbow, rainbow bright, light bright yarn and it's, it's great. I love the way that it's knitting up. So I'm going to take this on vacation and hopefully be able to finish it. That will be like my main focus. And I'll also take the muscle burrows. But, and I'm going to show you what I printed out because of course I am. Where is it? Okay, I don't have it because of course I don't, but I'm going to put a picture up here. There is a pattern that I ran across that I showed you guys called Summer in a Box. And it is a really pretty tee. It has a really pretty shoulder design and it's in DK weight. So I got this and I was interested in trying it out. And this is Barocco Renew. And... There's the fiber content, and I'm going to read it out loud in just a second. I'm just giving you a minute to look at it. This is 35% viscose, 30% wool, 30% nylon, and 5% cashmere. It is recycled and sustainable fiber. It is 164 yards or 150 meters. The thing that I've noticed most about this is how soft it is. It is a DK weight yarn. And it doesn't say a colorway. So the colorway from now on is going to be pink because that's what it is. I honestly think it was called like coral or something, but I can't remember. But I'm thinking I'm going to take this and make a summer in a box. So that should be showing up pretty soon. So... 
I'm going to show you a couple of patterns and I printed out way more than I should show you because we've got like a lot here. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is the one that I've already mentioned and it is the Sea Glass Cardigan by Woolen Pine. Have you guys seen the Sea Glass designs? These were really popular. Well, they still are really popular, but they've been really popular around like Advent knitting and things like that. It's one by one color work and you change your colors like every row. But they came out with a cardigan and I'm going to put, I, I show you this picture, but have no fear because you're going to be seeing a color picture like up here. I just printed this out so that I could talk about the pattern without sounding like I have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, so it's a DK weight yarn and... The one thing that I liked about when I was reading through this pattern was, and I actually, I bought myself this pattern. So they've got all of their sea glass patterns on sale right now for 30% off through Monday, June 24th. And so that made the pattern, I think, $6, which I think is really good. But when I was reading through the description, they said that they had a new way to deal with the yarns and they mentioned the yarn ends and they mentioned something about an I cord and this seemed interesting to me. So if you take a look at the picture, the cardigan also has a button band. Now what if like you somehow took that button band and kind of folded it over to hide your ends, maybe something like that could work too. Do you know how like when you steak and you cut, 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 and you have like all the frayed ends and sometimes people will kind of like button band them, button, like do a long button band and kind of fold it over to tuck them in. Maybe something like that would work for the sea glass because I feel like that would be something fun to try uh, because weaving in all of those, those ends, I'm never ever going to make the card again. But I feel like if I could take advantage of the button band and do it that way, that it would be a great, a great one to try. So more on that later, depending on if I decide to do it or not. Can you see this? This is agave. That is such a cute shirt. It's agave by Yumiko Alexander and it is in worsted weight yarn. Huh. It's a real it's a cute tee in worsted weight yarn. But you know if you look at the pattern, it's almost like If you look at the picture, and I should have put a picture up here, it looks like the yarn is knit to a gauge that's looser, that it, it's not a very tight gauge. So it, it's so cute. I love it. It says that it takes between 650 and 1093 yards. And it comes in sizes 42 to 58 inches. It does not seem like it would be very hard to adjust this because what you have is basically a lace down the side, but other than that, it's pretty much just a boxy tee in a loose gauge. It does say it's a linen weight yarn, so maybe it isn't as loose fit, a loose gauge as it seems, but it, I think that it is. I'm sure that you could use a different, you could use like a DK weight and adjust the sizing. Okay, I printed this one out because I am always talking to you guys about sweaters and I feel bad because not everybody is a sweater knitter, right? So this is Rainbow Bouquet, and this is a shawl. Now, there's a picture up here 
This is from Telly Bean Knits, Stephanie Latvin. And this is great because you can use this for advents and it's such a pretty pattern. This pattern I thought was so pretty. I bought it. I have this pattern and I am not a shawl knitter. I think I've knit maybe two shawls in my entirety of shawl knitting. The reason that I got this is because I think that it's a really cute pattern to use Advents on. And I love Advents. It's always been one of my fun things to make. It says on her web, her Ravelry that if you buy three of her patterns, you can get one free. And Stephanie Lotman, I believe... She makes the Bright Axis tea, and I love that tea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. If not, I'll put it down below, but I'm pretty sure she wrote that book that I love. Self-striping... Do you hear that bird? I'm going to put the book down below, too, because I can't remember what it's called. But it's my one of my favorite knitting books. It deals exclusively with self-striping yarn. It has a bright access tee in it, the sock arm sweater. Um, it's, it's a great book, and it always makes me happy to look through it. And I like I said, I have two bright access tees. So I'm going to tell you guys about one more pattern. Okay, we're going to talk about Velicor. Have you guys heard about Velicor? This is not a new release. This is an Andrea Mau Maori basically tee, and I've been looking at it. It's knit in light fingering. That is the picture. I've seen some really pretty velicores before, uh, just on Instagram, and it's a light, lighter weight tee, so it seems like it'd be kind of fun to make. It is. It says it's boat neck, bottom up, cables. Stripes, color work, twisted stitches, reversible. Huh, I wonder how... See, now I'm interested. It says she used a cotton wool blend for the summer version and switched to 100% wool yarn for a warmer one. That looks like... It looks like it'd be fun to make. I have knit exactly one Andrea Maori pattern. I've knit the um, Comfort Fade Cardi. And so I don't really know how her sizing plays with me. But it says she sizes available are 1 through 9. And it goes from 38.5 inches to 71.5. So there's definitely a lot of room with the sizing to kind of figure out what size you'd like best. It is $9 and it seemed like it'd be fun. I know that Andrea is a very popular knitwear designer and it feels like I should definitely try out a couple of her patterns. Usually I, I tend to, who do I tend to stick? Well, I tend to stick a lot with Hohi Locatelli whenever I'm looking for patterns and I think that part of the reason is because she makes her sleeves pretty fitted and I've noticed a lot of her body is a little bit like looser and I really love fitted sleeves. <laughs> How many times have I, am I going to mention that this this podcast? Okay so anyways like I said comment on your favorite pattern that I talked about below. I will put the QR codes up so that you can actually take a look. Uh, they'll either be Ravelry or they won't be, but if it's a Ravelry link, I'll put a like little asterisk so that you guys know where you're going. Um, if it's a Ravelry link, I couldn't find a different link to, to link you to, and that's generally just how I do it because Ravelry isn't super user-friendly for a lot of people, so I try to pick other links if I can. Um, but anyways, leave a comment below about the favorite, your favorite pattern that you liked, and I will draw a winner, and you can, 
I will draw a winner next week and then you can pick out either one of those patterns or a different pattern and let me know and I'll gift it to you. But other than that, I think that's all of all of the knitting this week. It seems like a lot and not a lot all at the same time. I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about like our vacation and just going and getting away. But I know that because we're going to, our kids are basically going to be driving the vacation because they're going to be in the water a lot. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, I'm going to be knitting a lot for the time. They love it though, it's good. Okay, so there's no more knitting. So if you're leaving now, that's fine. I'm going to talk about my life for like this long because I don't have pretty much anything to say. It's literally going to be like a minute. We are going on vacation soon. We are very excited. And I have a second opinion appointment on July 2nd to talk about my back. But other than that, everything's been okay and good. It's rained all week and that sucks for pain. But if you know, you know, especially with nerve pain. Ugh. <laughs> There's nothing that I can really talk about that I read. Um, nothing that I'm going to mention because it's already been 33 minutes and it... Anyways... I did pick out a book called The One Who Was Taken, and I'm like, this this much, I'm so tongue-tied today, I'm like, this much through it, but then it seems good, so we'll see where that goes. Other than that, we're just waiting for vacation, and hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun today just running around and doing crazy things. I hope that you guys are having an awesome week or weekend or whatever time area it is for you. I hope that you're looking forward to summer or winter depending and I'm glad that you stopped by and I hope to see you guys next week. Don't forget to comment below to be entered in the pattern giveaway. Thank you guys. Bye!